I'm reading a book now and let me just read part of it. Love. Love is not a fuzzy feeling, but it is a self-giving commitment that results in action. It is not a noun. It is a verb. It is an action word. And here we are going to get an example of what that means, of what love means and what it involves. It involves sending the Son from His position in heavenly glory and sinless perfection to earth to become flesh. You know the shock your body gets when you jump from a hot tub into an icy pool? If you don't, try it sometime. Now, Imagine going from a place where there was no sin at all to a place like Bethlehem or Jerusalem or let's just say London for this matter. It involved the son laying aside his majesty and becoming an infant, an infant who fell over, who vomited and soiled his nappy and grazed his knees. It involved walking a mile in our shoes facing temptation of all kinds, misunderstanding, even bereavement, and rejection. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. This is from 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. Now, come with me about 10 miles north of there, to a rubbish dump outside Jerusalem, 33 years later. The man, much has changed. The infant, that, the, infant the most powerful symbol, symbol of the love of God that could ever have been given, has now grown up into a man, but a man no longer physically recognizable because of the welts on his face and the ripped flesh across his chest and back. The sky above him no longer has bright stars in the night, but dark clouds in the day. The two people next to him are not loving parents, but common criminals. The crowd have changed from saying Hosanna in the highest to now saying his blood be upon us and our children. His earthly father has died. His closest friends have abandoned, denied, or betrayed him. His enemies have mocked and humiliated him. The government has stripped tortured and crucified him and the wrath of God at all our lies and lusts and pride and envy and greed is being poured out on him breaking utterly the fellowship with the father and the spirit that he has experienced and exalted in since before the foundation of the world if that doesn't explain to you what the love of God is, come closer to the cross and listen to what Jesus is saying. The only one who matters is thinking about his mother, thinking about his friend, and thinking about even the criminal next to him. The God who created water is now asking for a drink. The God-man whose presence had never borne any sin is crying out in anguish at being forsaken by his father. The man with nails through his wrists and nails through his feet, his lungs slowly filling with his own blood, is crying out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Astoundingly, the one who decided to allow man to make his own choices, now fully experiencing their consequences, 
is, is shouting triumphantly that those consequences have been dealt with and now is finished. A victory cry that still resounds across history, affirming once and for all the love of God. In this is love, now that we have not, uh, and this is love, not that we have loved God, but that God loved us first, that he sent his son to be the price for our sins. Isn't it amazing? That is on page seven, no. That is on page 69 to 71. The name of the book is Incomparable by Andrew Wilson. It's a nice book.